What a privilege to be able to share with you again from the Word of God. What exciting days we live in. I've just come back from another tour right around the world. Imagine there in South Korea, four services back to back, 25,000 people. Had the privilege of having my grandson uh, traveling with me. But let's look into the Word of God to one of the most important passages in my Christian life. Those of you who know me know I came to Jesus because a woman prayed for me. I wasn't from a Christian background. She put my name on her Holy Ghost hit list, prayed not only I'd become a Christian, she prayed I'd become a missionary. Then she sent me a Gospel of John through the post, which exploded in my heart and prepared me for this major Billy Graham meeting uh, there in New York City. Uh, March 3rd, 1955, boy, that dates me. There's now a film uh, about what happened there in Madison Square Garden and what happened since then called George for Real, and it's even going on television in some places. But I was still selling fire extinguishers. I was a young Christian traveling across the state, setting up uh, agents for my fire extinguisher business, fire alarms. Um, that was an interesting business, by the way. I would light petrol fires in front of people's houses, put them out with my little extinguisher. So I was selling a lot of those. I had about 200 people working as my agents part-time, uh, but God had something big for me. And one night when a woman challenged me about baptism, I didn't understand much about that. I read the entire book of Acts in one night. And, and I concluded that one of these days I should get baptized. But the main thing he hit me with was Acts chapter 20. Let's read that passage. Starting really there, pick it up at verse 19. Serve the Lord with great humility and with tears in the midst of severe testings by the plots by my Jewish opponents. You know how I have not hesitated to preach anything that would help you, taught you publicly and from house to house. Somebody called that 2020 vision. We have public opportunities. We have private opportunities. Not everyone gets the opportunity to preach in public, but everyone can have that ministry of sharing their faith. It's so sad that surveys have shown that many Christians not only are not sharing their faith, they're not even talking much to non-Christians. We've created our little Christian ghettos. We go on Christian holidays and we go to church and we sing, but we often fail to reach out to those around us. So Acts 20:20 20, 20 is a good verse for that challenge. I've declared both the Jews and Greeks, we must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. I love this verse because in the midst of exhortation, which seems to be mainly for us believers, there's this little verse pointing out that salvation is by faith and by grace. And it's so important when we're committed to radical discipleship, spiritual growth, spiritual formation, to remind ourselves that it only begins when a, personal, a person has personal faith in the Lord Jesus as outlined in that verse. And then look at verse 22. And now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Thousands of people get involved with Operation Mobilization every year. I'm not so involved with it now as I was led to step out of leadership now 14 years ago, but I'm still 100% part of the movement and actually trying to recruit all the time. It's all done, of course, through the internet. And it's amazing. Young people really want a lot of detail about what they're getting into. I'm not saying that's wrong, but look what the Holy Spirit said to the Apostle Paul. He more or less didn't tell him very much, except, oh yeah, verse 23, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prisons and hardships are facing me. Now imagine if someone applied to OM or some other mission and they sent them this answer. The only thing really we can promise you is hardships, difficulties, perhaps imprisonment. That brings to mind a close friend who I've been having a lot of time with lately and only discovered that in his early days he spent weeks in prison in what then was Yugoslavia. And he's right there in Serbia even right now in his senior years serving Jesus, which just reminds me of that, I believe, important truth. There's no retirement 
in kingdom work. There's lots of changes and ill health can change everything. But as much as we can, no matter what our age, we need to be radically committed to Jesus and active in sharing our faith, serving him, helping other people. But I need to read on because the key verse that God hit me with that night, which became my life verse, is verse 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. I want to ask you to search your own heart as you read this verse. I'd encourage you perhaps even to memorize this verse or restudy the passage when maybe you get some more time because I believe this is God's standard for discipleship and commitment. Let's just read it once again because the Word of God is stronger than anything I can say. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Maybe when you read that verse, you're a little fearful. You think that's, that's too much for you. I've discovered as I'm very involved in counseling people face to face and by internet, I answer every email personally. I mix it all with prayer. But a lot of people, uh, they put themselves down. They, they, don't, they don't really believe that God loves them and that God wants to use them. And I want to share this story I got from, from a friend about a family in a thunderstorm. The storm was so bad, the lightning was so fierce that even the adults were nervous. Then they realized their little daughter is up alone in the bedroom. And so they run upstairs and open the door. There's another thunder and lightning. They expected to find her under the bed. There the little girl was looking out the window. They said, are you okay? And she said, I'm fine. I, I think God is taking my picture. I'd never thought of that. God's love for me. I've had a number of failures, especially with the lust of the eyes. Once a pornographic magazine hanging in a, in a tree in the woods with bullet holes in that someone used for target practice. That had been a huge struggle in my life as a young Christian. And there were times when I thought it would wipe me out completely. Well, I wish I could give you a, a victorious life testimony about the magazine that day, but it, it made a fool out of me, and there in the woods I fell into that sin of lust. But somehow, because as a young Christian, I saturated myself with the Word of God, especially verses like 1 John chapter 2, sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. I knew that somehow God would forgive me, even though I felt bad, I felt unforgiven. I think especially when we have any kind of failure in the sexual area, we feel 10 times more guilt than we, when we sin in other areas that are just as important, according to the Word of God, just as important with God. Impatience was one of my struggles. And only when I realized how serious that was, my impatience, my irritability, that little book, Calvary Road, was a great help at that point in other writings that I was able to get greater victory and become a more patient and spirit-filled person. To this day, one of my favorite verses in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness. These things should be manifest in our lives. We shouldn't make excuses. This is why I'm constantly calling people to honesty, to brokenness, to repentance, that we so see so clearly in the Word of God. God loves you. He wants to use you. I'm sure probably He's already using you, but He wants to use you more. And I believe even in these senior years, God wants to use, you, use me more. In fact, this past 12 months, especially with the release of this film and also the release of my new book, uh, messiology or more drops, mystery, mercy, and messiology has been one of the best years of my life. God wants to use you. And so I'd encourage you to take this verse, Acts 20, 24, make it more personal. 
Search your own heart. It won't be an easy road. It will demand daily denying self, taking up the cross, and following Him. Surely that's one of the most unpleasant messages for a lot of people. But it shouldn't be, because it's combined with the joy that God gives. I've had the most incredible 60 years, pretty well every day, 60 years, a sense of purpose, a sense of fulfillment. Do you think the world really can offer this kind of thing? I have followed the lives of hundreds of people in every area of society, and to see how many of them finish and all the messes they get into, I realize I'm a very privileged person. I was also helped by this quote from one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, who through his writings have helped thousands come from agnosticism and atheism to the Lord Jesus. C.S. Lewis said this, please listen, unless you can teach your moods where they can get off, you can never, never either be a sound Christian or even a sound atheist, just a creature dithering to and fro in its beliefs, really dependent on the weather and on the state of its digestion. Brothers and sisters, if you and I are going to follow Jesus, it's going to be rough, it's going to be tough. The Bible says, Satan as a roaring lion seeketh whom he may devour. It shocks me when I hear people who neglect prayer, they neglect the Word of God, and yet they think somehow things are all going to work out and they're going to live this happy life and have this little happy family. It's contrary to what the Lord Jesus taught. Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. I want to ask you, do you know something about that? And what about Galatians 2.20? Is that one of your favorite verses? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. This is the only Christian faith I read about in the Word of God. At the same time, our God is merciful. Our God is patient. We're all in a pilgrimage. We're all going to have our times of failure. We're all going to sin. The less, the better, of course. And God is there to forgive us. He's taking our picture. He wants to use us more than we're willing to be used. And it's a great mistake. And some people make it when they hear me trying to recruit people for OM. That, of course, if you're not a missionary or a pastor, well, you must be, you know, sort of in second place. We need people in every area of society. Some of my heroes are actually business people. I'm reading a new book about this right now called Gospel Patrons, showing that whenever there was a character like me or someone that was unusually used, there was usually a business person, professional person, helping provide the finance. God wants to use you in that area as well. In our OM history, we found finding the people was easier than finding the money. Radical commitment to Jesus means everything, time, money, future, relationships. We put it all in His hands and we say this one thing I want, to finish the course, to finish the ministry God has given me. God bless you. I hope some of you will read my book or see my film. I look forward to getting emails from some of you and we believe God is going to use you. And we look forward, maybe even a year or two from now, knowing how God is using you in your present situation. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your word, sharper than a two-edged sword. And Lord, we respond by your grace to be the men, to be the women you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.